This is the plaintiff, Doris Cochran. She says she makes ugly Christmas sweaters and sold one to the defendant who now refuses to pay her, even though she said she loved it. That's right. The woman's now claiming she's embarrassed to wear the thing and has been emotionally damaged. Oh, brother. She's suing for $300, the cost of the Christmas sweater. This is the defendant, Catherine Andrea. She says she told the plaintiff she was going to an ugly Christmas sweater contest, and the woman told her she could make a sweater that would win the $1,000 prize for being the ugliest. The woman made her the raunchiest thing she's ever seen. Phallic elves, boob ornaments, and Santa doing some untoward things. Over $100? Yeah, right. She's accused of having no holiday cheer. All parties, please raise your right hand. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Millian is not presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Doris Cochran, you are suing your, I guess, former friend, Catherine Andrea, for $300 that you say she owes you for a sweater you worked on for her. Tell me what happened. That's correct. Hi, Your Honor. I'm a single mom of two. I've been making ugly Christmas sweaters for the last six years. Ugly Christmas sweaters? Yes. Okay. I've been selling them in local stores up until the pandemic, and then things just, you know, kind of died down. So I've been selling them to family and friends and locally. Um, so an ugly Christmas sweater contest was coming up, a party that we were all going to. Me and Catherine have been friends for about a year now, hanging out going out to clubs, karaoke. How did uh, you two meet? We met through like a Facebook meetup group. Really? Yeah, yeah. That, that's out there? That is That's a great there. idea. It's so cool. So you meet like new people and everybody gets together and yeah. So we kind of just been like hangout buddies, I guess you'd call it, uh, since we met. And, All right, are these uh, examples of the sweaters you're talking about? So these are other sweaters that I had sold in the past to some of the stores, uh -huh. the local stores. Um, I started, it started progressing where some, my sweaters started to become a little more phallic because people thought they were very fun. So I would be making sweaters, you know, with boob ornaments and, um, uh, you know, gloves on the chest area and, you know, <laughs> okay. handprints like on the back where the butt would be. And okay. So they, you know. You they found that those sold very they well. They sold very well. Yeah. I mean, they were just like flying, you know, off the And how were you, the how were you selling them online? So I was selling them at two local stores. I don't. Uh, originally. Yeah. Uh, originally. So even, even the, the raunchy ones were yes. selling at stores? Okay. Hardcore. Yeah. So, um, it, you know, it was selling better, I guess, at yeah, the stores. Yeah, sure. Like, you know, because, you know, not everybody wants a wild sweater like that. But, you know, me and her hang out and party, and so for a whole So year, whose idea was it to, for her to enter an ugly sweater contest and for you to make the sweater for her? Well, she already knew that I made sweaters, but so. we both knew that there was going to be a, a, a contest. I, you know, just wore just a regular, I wanted her to win. Right. So I went all out for her. And she, like, she right, gave me. Right, but did she say to you, will you make me yes. a sweater? And then did you tell her the price is going to be $300? Yes. All right. And she, then both of you are figuring she's going to win because the sweater that you made was pretty outlandish. Where was this party, the contest? It was in our friend's house, Matt's okay. house. Okay. And so did she tell you what she wanted? Uh, no, she didn't. Either. She did say she wanted like candy canes on it. She said, I, you know, I could do whatever I wanted. She totally gave me complete creative control. Um, she knew, you know, that I make some pretty wild ones. So I, I wanted her to win, you know, and right. I, I went over the top. Did the subject of raunchiness come up? Not really, but I mean, she's familiar with my work, so. Okay. All right, so, and how is she familiar with your work? Well, I mean, she's seen pictures. You know, okay. I've showed her pictures before. Right. Um, you know, um, yeah, she's seen, you know, pictures of my kids in them, too. And Well, I uh, presume your kids aren't wearing the raunchy ones, but maybe I'm, I'm making a lot of presumptions here. <laughs> All right, so, yeah. so, she, so, she, so she just says, go nuts. Yes. And, right, so you go nuts, and then what day, when do you show her the sweater? Okay, so uh, it, I had only, like, a couple of weeks, and so I... 
you know, I purchase all these dec different decorations and ornaments, and they can get quite expensive at, you know, certain stores and how elaborate it is. Uh, so I had about a couple weeks. It took me about 10 hours to make. So I worked on it a little bit, you know, when I could over the course of a couple of weeks. Um, the plan was that I was going to meet her at the party um, and that she was going to bring $300 cash after I gave her the sweater. Uh, that never happened. We get to the party, we go into the bathroom, she puts it on, she said she loved it, and next thing you know it, you know, we're hanging out, you know, she, she didn't, I didn't really press her for the money at the time, you know, I figured she would give it to me at some point, and then, you know, we're just drinking, and um, I did, I could back up. You want me to tell you everything that yeah. happened? Yeah. <laughs> so the contest happened, um, and of course she didn't win. It was some other girl in like a really cheap uh, sweater, like just very generic. I mean, it was unbelievable. I could because tell let's see the sweater you made for her. I need to see this now. Will you hold it up, please? Let me make sure I have it situated the right way. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's see what we got going on here. I don't suppose I could get you to put it on, can I? Would you have an objection to that? Uh, That's fine, I guess, you're hesitating. I guess. Did you have an objection that day or did you put it on that day? Oh, I, I put it on that day and I, I was a little bit uncomfortable, but I kind of didn't want to say it. I wanted to be enthusiastic and, um, you know, definitely maintain that good attitude for, for the contest and all that and have my shot at winning. It's horrible. Well, it's an ugly sweater contest. What is this supposed to be? Is this a, what is it supposed to be? Actually, a penis? You can squeak it. Yeah. It's and you can squeak it too. So, yeah, there were a lot of guys touching her. Yes, and that's that the night. thing that had me, like, just kind of like, you know, feeling a certain way is because it was all these strange, bottom of the barrel, just drunk guys, just all coming up to me, just way, way so many of them. Um, being like, oh, wow, oh, this is so cool. What? Oh, wow, I love your sweater. Oh, it, like, it, oh, like, oh, okay, but well, well, <laughs> if some guy comes up to me and is going to touch me, he's going to get up off the floor and tell people he fell. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like in other words, you don't need to let them touch you. You could stop them from touching you. Yeah, I, I mean, it, you know, I, I don't know that anything about that says touch me. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's raunchy for sure, but... Yeah, um, that's what had me so uncomfortable. I was just like, whoa, like, this is way too much. But okay, but you were happy to wear it. You participated in the contest in it. I was like, I and the contest like prize happy. was a grand, right? What is it? A, a, the contest prize was a thousand dollars. Yes. All right, and who was voting? Um, like, who was making the decision on the sweaters? It was just Matt, the owner of the house. Like and everybody he picked, paid like a five dollar fee to get in. And, right, yeah. and then he and then he ends up picking. Does anybody have a picture of the sweater that won? No. Oh, no, that would be awesome. It would, yeah. You could take it off. You don't need to keep that on. It was so <laughs> generic. Right. I think uh, he, so just, yeah. he was just trying to get mm, her number? Probably. Yeah, okay. That's, uh, that's what I think. All right. Yeah. So now when and when uh, Ms. Andrea doesn't win, does she? do you talk to her after that? No. I, uh, you know, she, had, she was already, like, kind of pissed at that point that she didn't win the contest. Right. Next thing you know it, you know, I think I went to go get a drink or something. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't even but, like, a couple of minutes. Next thing you know it, I can't find her. Matt tells me that she stormed out and she's already gone. So at this point, you know. How many people were at this party? Gosh, oh goodness, a lot. A hundred or twenty? Uh, no, probably, yeah, probably closer to a hundred. Yeah. It was yeah. a lot. It was a lot. Big old house party. Yeah, huge okay, house go on. party. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the next her. day you text her and you yes. say, I, uh, I need to get paid. Yeah. And what does she say to you? Yeah, she's just like, no, I was mortified. She's like, I'm not paying for the sweater. That's not what I asked for. And I'm like, well, well what you did you ask, ask for, Ms. Andrea? I, I wanted something, something wild, crazy, fun. Like I said, I said candy canes, but I didn't mean candy cane penises. Like it was. Oh, you should have been more was, specific. <laughs> so how would she know? <laughs> okay, but you know that she specializes in raunchy. So did yeah. you tell her I don't want you to do raunchy? Um. I'd never seen anything this raunchy. I'd never seen anything so off the wall that it was so when something you saw I'd been it, did you reject with. it? Did you say no? I'm not gonna. No, this is not. I can't do this. No. I I was just kind of like, 
Yeah, thank you. Welcome back to the People's Court. I'm Harvey Levin. This case takes the issue of ugly Christmas sweaters up to a whole new level. Let's go back inside the courtroom. You told her you loved it. Yeah. And you did love it. You loved it when you saw it. Yeah, it was just like, yeah, I love it. You know, it was one of you, those. You just now don't love it because you didn't win the $1,000 and because guys were touching you all night, apparently. Yes. It, 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 it was the fact that the guys were touching me, um, all these weird guys making me uncomfortable. Um, and then... You know, you can stop that, though. You know that, right? Like... Yeah, yeah, it was kind of like, eh. But it was, it was one of those. Like, you know, I, I was, I was kind of concerned for, for safety, but... Well, uh, how concerned for safety could you possibly have been? You could take the sweater off. Yeah. Right, yeah. But, but so you were at a party. You were having a good time. Were you drinking, too? Yes. Yeah. And then, uh, and then you don't win. And is it true you stormed off mad? I did storm off mad. Because I, I, was, I would um, expect you to win too. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like if you had won, would you have paid her? Oh, absolutely. Oh, okay. So then, <laughs> yes. please tell me what your defense is then, because she can't guarantee you're going to win. That depends on who Matt wants to meet. Apparently, <laughs> whatever yeah. Matt's criteria for the evening appears to be, or whatever. So she can't yeah. guarantee you're going to win. You probably should have won. You probably well, yeah. think you should have won. You probably agree you should have won, and then you'd be rolling in dough, and we wouldn't be here. But you can't possibly think that your obligation to pay her depends on whether you win. Oh, because th th that's the thing is when we were talking about you know, the sweater and, you know, her making it and me buying it for the 300, she said, you're guaranteed to win this. You know, you're going to win this contest. And that's the thing where I was just like, well, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure because it's like... Unless she's the judge of the contest, how on earth could she guarantee... Did you guarantee she'd win the contest? I have psychic powers. No. Uh, right. No. So, so that doesn't sound believable no. to me. I just think you're angry because you didn't win. And you're wondering when you're going to wear that again. Yes. Uh, although, frankly, I, you know, depending on, I mean, I wouldn't wear that in, well, that's not true. My kids aren't kids anymore. I right. might wear that in front of my, and now I wouldn't wear it. But, <laughs> but, but, you and know. And it makes if noises. It, is it, huh? And it makes noises. And it makes noises. No, yeah, that, that was the clincher. Not <laughs> Santa upside down on my crotch. That wasn't the clincher. Yes. Um, all right. Yeah, you got to pay her, Andrea, because a contract is a contract, and it doesn't change because you don't like the... You, you change your mind about the wisdom of the contract. You know, you can't possibly have thought that the only way you'd pay her is if you won, just because she says, oh, it's going to be great, you're, you're going to win. Even if she did say you're going to win, you know she can't control whether you win. You're not naive. You're not a child. But and, you know, the idea that, oh, men were touching me and that's her fault. No, men are touching you and, the, and that's the men's fault. Let's start with that. And then it's your fault for not stopping it because, you, you really, you don't have to stand there and be touched, you know. So, um, but it's predominantly the man's fault. And, you know, uh, all you got to do is stop the behavior. Bad behavior goes on when it's unstopped. And what we all have to realize is nip it in the bud, right? And it has nothing to do with the sweater. And you know she makes raunchy sweaters. And if you tell her you've got all creative control, you're not telling her, hey, make it a, make it a, a rated G sweater because I know what you normally do. So, no, you need to pay her $300 verdict for the plaintiff. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. So the plaintiff prevails. She's finally going to get that $300 for that ugly sweater, which was really very ugly. Uh, Ms. Andrea, let me ask you something. The sweater really was pretty bad, but in your mind, was it just not bad enough or was it too bad? How do you respond? It was too bad. It was completely, I'd never seen anything so raunchy in my life. Like, and I had no reason to think that it would be this raunchy and this bad. And that's the thing that had me so uncomfortable. Well, let me ask you something. You had formed a friendship with uh, Ms. 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 Cochran. I gather this has been really injured by this. Am I right? Are you still friends? <sighs> oh, not friends at this time. It's like, I'm trying to think about what kind of circumstances that our friendship could get patched up, but it would be really hard. I mean, that's really shame over a silly thing like a stupid sweater, don't you think? I guess that's a true point. But still, it was embarrassing. And there were a lot of people just groping me and making me so uncomfortable at that party. Well, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. The exit's on your left there. You got to pay her the $300. And who knows if you'd be friends again or not. I don't know. I guess okay. we'll see what happens in the future. And thank you. You're very welcome. All right. All right, let's see what Ms. Cochran has to say. She's on her way out of the courtroom now. Uh, she was very creative, obviously 
Is that pretty, a pretty good example of the kinds of sweaters you normally make? Or was this overly raunchy? I mean, I do make raunchy sweaters and I do make phallic sweaters. But yeah, I, I went over the top. Yeah, I wanted her to win. Were you disappointed that you didn't win? We didn't hear that. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah, I was very disappointed. I mean, that's like my work, you know? And I put a lot of blood and sweat and tears in that. So yeah, I was very disappointed. All right, bottom line is, are you upset that the friendship is, has obviously been hurt to a degree? Yes, yeah, I want to mend our friendship. I'm hoping that coming here, we can now move forward. You know, she can still wear that sweater now every year. So, yeah, I hope our friendship can right. continue. Well, good luck to you, all right? Thank, Thank you. you very much. Good luck, and you get your $300. Finally. Yeah, Better finally. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, good enough. You're welcome. All right, Harvey. Well, Doug, it could have been that the defendant could have put in the contract that the only way the plaintiff would get paid is if the defendant won that contest. Uh, the fact is it was not in the contract, and therefore, by losing, that doesn't negate the fact that the defendant owed the plaintiff money. My son is a college student who works for my dad and stepmom's restaurant as a cashier. Two to three people use the same register, but whenever the drawer comes up short, my son is the only person they deduct money from. He was never told about this in advance and only found out when he saw the deduction on his check. Is this legal? Can he do anything to get his money back? I think he can. I think it, uh, that may be an actionable situation where the, the employer might have to give the money back because if you have two or three people with access to that register, and unless you've got a camera on it or you've got some kind of proof that it's him, the reason it's short, uh, how, how do you go about just saying, oh, yeah, gimme, 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 and let the other two people walk? I mean, you've got to have some kind of basis for this. Right. I mean, it's certainly... I, I mean, I, I'm hoping that, the, that, that, that rather than filing a case, although I agree right. with you that they've definitely got a case, that you actually speak to Grandpa. Right. Because uh, why is right. Grandpa assuming that his grandson is the one, right, um, right. if that's the case? And uh, maybe you find out, no, he is the only one who has access. And then you learn new things. Absolutely. You just never know. But I think step one is definitely trying to communicate and resolve this. Um, right. And how old is your son? I mean, is your son 16 or is your son 26? I mean, may, right. you know, should you really be involved? And would you be involved if it wasn't your dad right. who owns the place? And Absolutely. Uh, I mean, if it was my dad, I'd definitely be getting involved. I don't care if they're 36, right. but, you know. You know, I, I look at it. I, I, when I heard the question, I was thinking in terms, like a prosecutor, is how can you prove this? Is there proof beyond a reasonable doubt? No, I, I, but I agree with you. Head. I don't think an employer can just do that if there's several people with right. access. You have, you have to have something. you have multiple people with access. Like, many years ago, I had a, a, a case as a federal prosecutor because one of the hijackers from the 9-11 uh, incident, Mohammed Atta, had obtained, the guy who flew the plane into the North Tower, he had obtained a Florida driver's license and had never taken the driving test, et cetera. And we were very interested in trying to find out how. And ultimately, we found out that there was a driver's license agency in Fort Lauderdale, and there was a driving school owner in the parking lot who had a relationship with somebody inside of that agency and was getting these phony driver's licenses without having people take a test for $2,500, $3,000 pop. And ultimately, we prosecuted him, the driving school leader, and convicted him. But he wouldn't roll over on the person behind the counter at the Department of Motor Vehicles. And we had three people that had access to that computer that gave out that particular license and to several other people who shouldn't have gotten them, later admitted uh, that they shouldn't have gotten them. But it didn't go anywhere. The one guy, uh, he, he took the fall. He went to trial. He got convicted, and he wouldn't roll How over. How much time did he get? 18, 24 months. I mean, wow. it's a document fraud crime. It wasn't yeah. that much. So right. That was the end of it.